that young, I don't know what's about to happen, but <laughs> seems like a lesson <laughs> might be taught. Nah, <laughs> We're just I was listening to Euphoria today. Maybe put on the right. greens too. How you felt about that? <laughs> oh man, it it was interesting. It was interesting. Did you like it? Um, I thought it was cool. Who's winning? How about that? That's a better question. <laughs> Who's winning the battle to you right now? Oh man, um, Drake is definitely winning from from an MC standpoint. You know. It, it took a while for him to get, for us to get the record from Kendrick. And when you wait a while, it got to be, it got to be like out of this world. I yeah. think if Kendrick dropped this record right after dropping Give Me 50, it would have been crazy. But like immediate, not yeah, waiting. If it was long. immediate, yeah. then it would have been crazy. But we waited. Been a couple a while. weeks. Been a couple few weeks. Yeah, they, to get this pause. I don't know, man. What do you think? I'm going I think Drake is winning. Euphoria didn't really uh it didn't, it didn't really move me. I'm not saying because I you know why I'm expecting lyrics from Kendrick Lamar. It isn't like I'm not saying yeah. he's in the lyricist, so you're expecting certain things and song was kinda long, took too long to came out, pause. Um and I, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just if you actually yeah, it was it was a good it was yeah. a good record. It was a good record, but it was a good record that we waited a while for. We didn't wait a while for a good record. Sometimes if you wait, you still can pop off. The Oracle came out two years <laughs> later. Four years later. Shit was hot. <laughs> sometimes when you wait, sometimes when you wait, it's still hot, though. You waited a couple of years and dropped the ball. No, no, no. <laughs> so, no, that's a good conversation. Yeah, so, so how come when you waited, your shit was still hot, though? How, that, how does that work? How does that work, though? The way, the way it works is... <laughs> <laughs> nah, the way it works, like yeah. I mean, you know yeah. us because because you had so much ammunition on me. I had to wait until you say everything you could say. <laughs> I ran out. I said, oh, this thing is killing me. I woke up and niggas, I missed my phone call. They like, yo, murder just dropped the bomb. I said, I heard it. Everybody in my crew panicking. I said, you remember, remember uh, it's a part in training day. <laughs> when uh, when Denzel threw the nigga on the, was arguing with um Hoyt, yeah, <laughs> and then nigga pulled the gun out of Hoyt. That's how I felt like, oh, I said, no, I said, that. I said that right, that's the shoot I know right there. That was a good one. So I was just wondering because it wasn't Euphoria, it wasn't the Oracle, but the Oracle waited. But no, it, it's yeah, just, just like when you did that. Curtis or any when yeah. you did. You know, Paul suck it or not. You, yeah. It's a certain thing you got to yeah. have in the record that Kendrick doesn't have in his record. Okay. Like, yeah, you got to school these niggas. Yeah, 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 you got to go, man. Like, you got to say something that make niggas look at the nigga different. You know what I'm saying? And when he did, when he did, the, um, I don't want to hear you say nigga. It was like that was a pause, an angle we already heard before. Yeah. I, no different than when you said um Curtis. Like, Yeah, like. Oh, shit is like, bro. And I was talking to somebody. I'm not saying this rap beef going on right mm -hmm. now is not interesting and, and something entertaining. But, yeah. you know, when we was doing rap, this is not just me and you. I'm just saying yeah. in general, people have the potential to die. <laughs> like, literally, really, yeah. or get or seriously hurt. And I just don't feel that <laughs> in these battles. And I don't, I'm not promoting this. I'm like, I'm yeah. happy that somebody might not. Nobody will get hurt. Hopefully, nobody will. Yeah. But, it just felt like dangerous. It felt like this doesn't feel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big J T V and Killer and Cam were right. Like the video on y'all way in. I'm gonna get a lot of dislikes here. I don't care. I genuinely don't care, bro. Like the amount of work I put in on this channel, the amount of people who are out here supporting me and love this channel and are subscribed. We're 1,115 deep. I appreciate and I love every single individual who pressed that subscribe button, who pressed that like button. And you haters, I invite you here. 
welcome to the voice of the culture i don't give a mother f u c k if you disagree with this opinion but i 100 percent agree with killer and cam murder i agree with both of them because this kendrick reply as good as it was which it was very very good i'm not gonna take that away from kendrick it's very very good but this is not the atomic bomb the nuclear and his career type track that it was marketed or at least it was said to be why do i say this y'all forget a few years ago Pusha t released the story of added on that was a nuclear bomb when nas replied to jay-z with ether that was a nuclear bomb when Tupac replied with hit him up after Biggie pulled out who shot you, that was a nuclear bomb. When I'm going deep now, when Jada Kiss released Checkmate after 50 came out with multiple disses to Jada, that was a nuclear bomb. Why have our standards lowered? Why do we give kendrick a pass why i know why because we don't like drake let me be 100 percent honest with you man drake has released so many horrible albums especially in recent times so many trash bubble gum irrelevant albums in the last maybe five years that people like myself who used to be very big fans of drake have slowly started to dislike and resent him and we casually forget that Drake has released classics such as Take Care. If you're reading this, it's too late. Nothing was the same. So far gone. Those are four classics that he's released. Four. But guess what, though? All of those albums were damn near 10 years ago. <laughs> I'm just giving it real. So what's happened is because people have started to hate or have been hating Drake and resenting him for what he's been able to release, which is Dudu Kaka, right? We have decided that he is not worthy to win a rap beef again because so far he's one and two in rap beefs. And when I say rap beefs, I'm saying overt rap beefs i'm not saying it not talking about anything covert i'm not talking about sneak disses i'm not talking about one-liners i'm not talking about no i'm saying direct i'm gonna talk about you on the track say your name on the track multiple times and the whole song from beginning to end to chorus you know i mean verse one verse two regardless of how long it is i'm gonna say your name and you're gonna say my name and we're engaging in a battle Drake is currently one for two. One for two. What am I talking about? He obviously cleared Meek. He destroyed Meek, right? N- number t- number one, his loss, first loss was with uh, Pusha T. That was a horrible loss. He got washed up, right? And you could argue that he lost to Kanye. In my opinion, I think he lost to Kanye. You know what I mean? Now, you could say that he's one-on-one with rap beefs, overt rap beefs. You could say that. You'd be valid. But we know that Drake has definitely won one beef and has definitely lost another beef. Why did he lose his beef definitively to Pusha T? Very, very simple. Pusha T dropped the story of Added On. And in the story of Added On... This, this this whole song by Kendrick actually makes the story of Added On look even better because, you know, Kendrick literally steals the verses and bars from the story of Added On. You know what I mean? And Kendrick, in his reply to Drake, you know, steals verses from Exodus 23.1 by, by Pusha T. Right? You got signed to one nigga that got signed to another, one nigga signed to another nigga. That came from Pusha T. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, the, talking about him not being black enough, you know what I mean? The thing about him you know, not being black enough, that was from Pusha T. Pusha T was the first one to really expose that. Exposing that Drake had a baby mother who's a prostitute. Well, porn star, my bad. 
really the same thing you'll see that a lot of porn stars are actually they sell they sell box that's actually very common if you didn't know that but push a t expose that you are hiding a child let that boy come home <laughs> like like deadbeat motherfucker you know all that that was push a t dog and of course kendrick is clever kendrick is smart kendrick knows how to put lyrical schemes he had three beat changes he had double entendres metaphors you know what i mean all of that the formula structure that's amazing because that by the way that's the standard though for a guy like kendrick right so when kendrick went off and say i don't like the way you talk the way you dress i don't like nothing about you i'm the biggest hater that was actually surprising because Kendrick likes to veil his, you know, tracks or at least his disses in multiple layers. He was overt with it. And that's kind of what I like about rap beef. Personally, for me, I want it to be easily digestible because ultimately, you know, disrespect is huge in the game of hip hop, especially the side genre, the side scale of beef. Tupac said in the beginning of Hit Him Up, that's why I F'd your B, you fat MFA. That's the first line. That is so disrespectful that it, mem- it sticks in your head and it's memorable. You know what I mean? And, and, and everybody knows that line. It, it, you know, Biggie himself, who shot you? Separate the weak from the obsolete. Hard to creep in these Brooklyn streets. We're talking about a dude that's referencing, you know what I mean? A, a pot getting shot. Hard to creep in these broken streets. Let me make this perfectly clear. I'm not saying that Euphoria is a bad track. I'm not saying that it's not a great track. I just, I'm just saying that it's not the atomic bomb that Kendrick marketed it out to be. A lot of the disses in the track actually came from Rick Ross too. So what we're doing now is we're... I'm not saying we are rewarding mediocrity, but we're pretending like this is bigger than it is because we, as a culture, dislike Drake. And when I say a culture, I'm talking about deep hip hop fans, people who really are engaged in the culture. And why do we hate Drake? Because he has underperformed in his greatness, especially in recent years. Like Push Up, that's Drake just rapping and Drake is great at rapping. So instead of him being an r&b singer and being a fake soft nigga be get to rapping get to the booth euphoria was not as good as push-up euphoria was not as good as champagne uh, pr- uh moments and euphoria was not as good as even chris brown's diss track which is i believe the best diss track out of all of these right now i'm just telling you facts but y'all are gonna uh, dislike this video. I do not give a damn. Cam and Mace are 100 percent right. And what made Mace's, you know, diss track, the Oracle, so good, so impactful, it was disrespectful. It was well written. It had a lot of great rhymes and it was classic. We're gonna remember the Oracle. We're not gonna remember Euphoria, man. Because Drake is just a better producer of songs. This was a disrespectful, you know, diss, but it was not anything new. It was not impactful. I do not see it. But I'm going to get a lot of dislikes for this. I'm going to stick on my square. Do not give a damn. Kendrick, I want something better than this. He disappointed me. Get in the comments. Let me know how y'all feel. Haters, I appreciate you. (laughs) I'm out.